Hey guys, it's Ross Scott and on the Space Coach today we're going to take a look at Captain Phasma's spread in The Last Jedi Visual Dictionary. Recall, at the end of the Captain Phasma comic, she rejoins Hux and the fleet four days after the destruction of Starkiller Base. So that's how long it's taken Rey to get to Acto and how long I guess they've been evacuating the car for, for timeline purposes. But here we are, here is her spread. Very nice one it is too. We see here her spear, various weapons. I think this is the one that she's holding on this piece. This is the Force Awakens Phasma as opposed to the um, Last Jedi one. Which I'm not sure if her helmet got that tiny little redesign as well. I'll have to have a look at it. But here is what it says. <clears throat> Phasma's ultimate loyalty is to her own survival, an ethos that has kept her alive and secured her elevated position as Captain of the Guard, overall commander of the First Order Stormtrooper forces. We saw that, of course, in the Phasma novel and in the comic. Within the First Order, she is used as a symbol of what the regime can offer. She was a native of a primitive world that was tamed and civilised with modern methods and technology. Not exactly. <laughs> but behind that artificial polish, her treachery and craven selfishness are the true reflection of First Order principles. That Finn, the most famous First Order turncoat in its brief history, sees through her facade, angers, phasma, no end. There was not really any hint of that in the film that I can recall. Now, it does say, um, for this image here, which we saw in the trailer, and also this is just before her and Finn fight. The augmented sensors of Phasma's helmet penetrate the smoke of the supremacy's burning hangar bay. Her steely focus is on eliminating the resistance infiltrators and finally correcting the anomaly that is FN2187. Newly polished chromium finished. finish. Grilled mesh, that's on the side bits, serves as vocoder and breathing inlets. We see along here that she has a magnetic bottle containing emergency cyrothoric acid. That's what she throws to melt her way out of Starkiller base. And she also, in the Phasma comic, has like a climbing line, you know, like a Batman line that they throw and they can swing. I assume that is how she will survive if she survives The Last Jedi. Phasma machined her chromium-plated armour from a salvaged Imperial yacht used by Brendel Hux, a key architect of the First Order. The ship was an Abu vessel once owned by the late Emperor Palpatine, and we did see that in the Phasma novel. Survival at all costs. Escaping from a trash compact into the chaos of the collapsing Starkiller base, Phasma's first priority was clearing all record of her disastrous lowing of the station's shields. In a further attempt to tie up loose ends, she went to great pains to track down and eliminate Lieutenant Sol Rivas, a First Order officer who could have revealed her treason. This was not the first time Phasma secretly assassinated a troubled ally, a troublesome ally. It says here about her helmet interface, this is the sort of view that she sees, so I guess to see all the RFID tags of the different troopers. Phasma's armour has custom modifications that gives her an advantage in combat. Behind the helmet's tempered polarised lenses is not graded integral MFTAS, multi-frequency targeting acquisition system. This cuts through low light and atmospheric interference. Blue eyes hidden <laughs> by expressionless mask. Now, Phasma wields a quicksilver baton for close combat. The durable cylinder is made from a collapsible micromesh matrix held in a containment field. When inactive, it condenses down to a small baton. When active, it instantly expands to its full length. And I don't think we really saw that either. I only remember her with the full stick. Close combat. Phasma grew up in the wilds of Parnassos, a harsh world of unforgiving terrain and weather. Born of a tribe that dwelled in the jagged rocks of the Skya, Phasma lived a merciless kill-or-be-killed existence. When the First Order came to her world, she saw an opportunity to escape that life by cementing her loyalty to the powerful off-worlders and abandoned her people to become a high-tech soldier. Her, skin with her skill with traditional melee weapons is a marker of her primitive past. Now, her boots here, polished by low-ranking troops. <laughs> now, data file, it just says about her, um, where are they? I can't see them. Yeah, her gloves, her gauntlets here. 
Fasmin used an anti-armor acidic compound to dissolve the door at the Starkiller trash compactor into which she was dumped. Phasma and Hux have conspired in the elimination of mutual political rivals such as Brendel Hux and also the attempt to take out Cardinal Crimson. Captain Cardinal, sorry. So yes, that is just what it says about Phasma. Now, will she return for episode 9? Maybe, maybe not. I wouldn't be at all surprised. It was kind of an ambiguous death. She's escaped worse. We've seen her escape worse, but this is what happens when a film ignores other parts of the canon. So we shall have to see. Because yes, we saw her blue eyes. She falls into the flame. Next film, she has to take her helmet off and we see that burned patch that was missing when she fell through the flame. And then Finn can kill her properly. At least that's how I would like it to play out. So you know that's not what's going to happen. <laughs> but anyway, just for now, that is our look at Captain and Phasma. A great character, sadly underused in both films. Let's hope episode 9, she gets a quality screen time and a death that she can be proud of. Please subscribe to my channel and enjoy this content. Leave me a comment suggestion for an upcoming topic you'd like to see discussed or like the video.